What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Physics 7B. It is me, Adam Kunish. Uh, so you may notice I'm back in my house now. Feels good. So I got the mic. Audio should be much cleaned up from before. Um, so today we're going to go over Bernoulli's equation and continuity. Um, this is part one of a four-part series. In this first introduction, I'm going to talk a little bit about what fluids are, um, some quantities we use to describe fluids, and I'm going to introduce the notion of energy density, which you'll be seeing in DLs if you haven't already. Okay, so let's hop into it. Okay, part one, introduction. So, what are fluids? So, we, we don't get too quantitative with respect to what we mean by fluid, but what we'll say about fluids is that they're um, materials which conform to their containers. So, for example, if you have a cup of water and you pour some water in it, I end up having the water conform to the sides of the container. That's all I mean when I say conform to the sides of the container. So on a microscopic level, what's going on in a fluid is, let's zoom in here, what's going on in a fluid is that the particles that make up the fluid, say, I don't know, say water, whatever it is, the particles make up the fluid, the interactions between them, the attractions between them, are not so strong that the, uh, the particles can't move freely. So the particles can just kind of move independently or near independently of one another. Uh, they aren't kind of like bound up in a tight lattice like in a solid. So fluids are uh, include liquids and gases. That's one key uh, that tends to throw people for a loop early on. Fluids include both liquids and gases. They're not just liquids. So again, the microscopic picture is we've got a bunch of particles just bouncing around, and the particles uh, sort of just slide past one another. They don't interact too strongly. In the case of a gas, they basically don't interact at all. In the case of a liquid, they only interact a little bit. Okay, on a macroscopic scale, some things you notice about fluids is that they flow, right? <laughs> so that's one of the main things we'll be talking about later today. Okay, so one of the main things that distinguishes the liquids from the gases is compressibility. So the notion of compression is that, like with a gas, for example, if I had, say, just some like cylinder full of gas, some container that had gas in it, it's relatively easy for me to like put in a wall in this container and push those gas particles over to one side. Say like this. Okay, so a gas allows me to compress my particles relatively easily. Liquids don't have that property. If you try to push on them, uh, it's too hard. They're, they're already too densely held together. Okay, um, let's run over to some useful quantities. So useful quantities with respect to fluids, we have uh, this first one is current. So current noted by the letter I. So current is basically a measure of how much stuff is flowing, how much stuff is flowing. So typically the way that we measure current is by like volume per time, volume time. Um, so for example, if I have um, a fire, you know, a fire, what do you call this? Fire hose. There we go. Let's go fire hose. All right. And the fire hose is spewing water onto a fire. Dank fire, bro. Okay. We got water spewing onto the fire. If uh, it's pouring out a gallon per second, then I would say the current is one gallon per second. Every second, it dumps a gallon onto the fire. One gal over sec. Now, because this is physics, a lot of times we're going to not use the uh, what are these, imperial units. We're going to instead use metric. So the typical units you'll see for current are things like meters cubed per second or centimeters cubed per second. All right. <clears throat> the next quantity of interest is pressure. And to understand what pressure is on a macroscopic level or microscopic level, we should kind of think about the particles. So if you all uh, remember from 7A, <laughs> There was this exercise you did where you had a bunch of particles that were in a box. There was a little weight on top of them. And that weight pressed down. And if this one wasn't something you covered, don't worry too much about it. I'll still describe it a little bit like in, in better detail. So basically, the way that I think about pressure, capital P, pressure is a force per area. We'll see a little bit later another way to think about it. So it's a force per area. <clears throat> 
The force in force per area is generated by the particles bouncing against the walls of the container. So every time a particle hits the wall of the container, it exerts a force. And since there's a zillion particles, pressure seems to be basically the same number. Because at any given time, roughly the same number of particles are hitting the wall. OK, so pressure is a force per area. So the typical unit we use for pressure is 1 pascal, which is capital P lowercase a, uh, which is a newton per meter squared. Newton per meter squared. OK, you might also see kilopascals. Of course, that's just 1,000 newtons per meter squared. Atmospheric pressure is 101.325 kilopascals. All right, I think that's all I really want to say directly about pressure. Um, we will revisit pressure in more detail when we get to the Bernoulli equation. We'll revisit all these, of course. But Okay, the last thing I want to mention is mass density, rho. So mass density, notice uh, it's not P, right? P is for pressure. I'll indicate uh, pressure in the future with a little serif at the bottom, this little guy here, to indicate pressure. Mass density, rho, is uh, is a little curly p, or a little, I guess you can think of it as like a little cursive p. And sometimes people draw it with a little angle in it to make it extra clear. There's a little angle here. Okay, so that's rho. Mass density is um, probably the density you're most familiar with. It's a property of any material that is, you know, like solid, liquid, or gas. Um, that's probably familiar again, Just but just to be clear, its units are kilograms per meter cubed. Or, you know, to be more specific, or, or to be more general, I guess, it's mass per volume. Volume. Notice, I call this thing the mass density. This is mass density. So this implies there are other kinds of densities. OK, it's the mass density. So one way to kind of like conceptualize mass density um, is if I have some material, say here's a big blob of something. Oops, let's make it black. Here's a big blob of something, aluminum, whatever. If I were to take a cube out of it, if I were just to cookie cut a cube out of it, let's say I cut a one meter by one meter by one meter cube out of it. So this is one meter cubed. If I cut a one meter cube out of this object and I weight it, it would have a uh, mass equal to the mass density in, in units of meters cubed. So for example, uh, you know, if, this had, if this object, whatever it is, had a mass density of 300 kilograms per meter cubed, then I sliced out this little cookie cutter shape that's one meter cubed, I would expect that thing to weigh uh, 300 kilograms. So the mass of this thing would then be 300 kilograms. Okay. Probably, I know it's a little basic, but we're going to build it up to uh, energy density, which I think is a little less intuitive. OK, I think that's all I really need to say about these two quantities. So in the, in the context of a fluid, um, the mass density is typically going to be constant for liquids and not always constant for gases because of that compressibility thing. Um, in our class, in fluid systems, we're going to pretty much always treat mass density as constant. We're almost always going to treat rho as constant. OK, let's move on down to energy density. So <clears throat> as I mentioned a second ago, uh, density, like mass density, is a mass per given volume. Energy density refers to an energy per unit volume. So if I were to have some fluid that's flowing down a pipe, I'll make this red thing my pipe. Boop. All right, so I have some fluid that's flowing down this pipe. What an energy density tells me is an energy density tells me the amount of energy of a particular type or uh, of the total energy density, how much energy lives in a given volume, V, of this fluid. So it is a uh, energy density is an energy per unit volume. It is an energy per unit volume. OK, so now I'll show that. Um, energy density is equivalent to pressure, at least in terms of units. So an energy density has units of energy per volume. So energy per volume. Now, what is an energy? Well, energy 
is the way I like to think about it anyway. There's many ways to get to an energy, but I like to think of it as a force times a distance. So if you think like MGH, MG is our force, force D is our distance, H. Yeah. MG is our force, yep. D, H, yeah, yeah. H is our D for distance, divided by volume. So I can further decompose this by looking at force. So force is a mass times an acceleration. And now at least for me, I'm like, okay, now I remember what each of these things are. Maybe not the case for, uh, you know, if you're not as familiar with physics, don't worry about it. But mass times acceleration times distance is a force times a distance divided by volume. So what are each of these things? Mass is kilogram. An acceleration is a meter per second squared. A distance is a meter. And a volume is a meter cubed. So what do we get? We get out kilogram second or kilogram over meter second squared. Okay. Meanwhile, what is pressure? Pressure is a force over an area. So pressure is a force over an area. And you might even be able to see just by seeing uh, volume and uh, and distance here that distance divided by volume gives us area. But Sorry, volume divided by distance gives us area. But let's just do that anyway. So a force is a mass times an acceleration over an area, which is kilogram times uh, meter per second squared divided by meter squared, which has units of kilogram per meter second squared. So pressure and energy density have the same units. They're they're one to one in that way. Okay. So that's just to say that intuitively, when I think of energy density, I'm basically thinking of a pressure, thinking of something analogous to a pressure. All right, um, that might leave some head spinning. That's all right. We're going to talk about it a little bit more in the next video on Bernoulli's equation.